Hello everyone, welcome back to my European Space Agency RP-1 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. We are going to launch all of our Mars missions for this window, the 2024 window. And the first one is the Mars Supply 2 mission, which also carries the control unit for our station so that we can finally control the station. Uh, of course, it's not a big problem. We could just undock the two parts if we needed to do something with it, but uh, for now, they're docked together and they don't have quite as much avionics as they need. Uh, so we're sending supplies along with the control unit and that'll ensure that we have plenty of supplies for our crew when the crew stays at the station later on. So anyway, uh, without any further ado, SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition. And we have two engine losses. We don't have a whole lot of time in this window, so I'm just gonna go. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit of a problem, but uh, the point is that if we roll back and roll out again, we won't have time for the rest of the missions, because rolling back and rolling out takes so long. So, yeah, we're just going. A little bit iffy, but uh, yeah, with the two engines out, we still have enough thrust weight ratio to lift off of the pad, though of course we're going to get more gravity losses and so it's gonna be a little bit difficult we'll see how it goes a little bit dark out there's some clouds up there which reminds me I need to continue my exploration of RSS Reborn and uh, the updates that have gone on with that nope we are above the clouds now so I went vertically longer than I otherwise normally would have. Then we are past the speed of sound. City of Kuru down there. And booster set. Well, both of the failed engines were on the boosters. So that's good, I guess. Okay, fairing set. We have 4,400 in the next stage. Right now, looking at this, we'll probably need six, 700 out of it. Oops, we're going past 100 kilometers. Um, yeah, let's say 700 from it in order to make orbit. So that leaves 3,700 left. And so hopefully the transfer will take about that much. Well, interesting to note that the Vulcanes can in fact fail, and two decide to do that at the same time. Okay, staging. So we've got two of the HM7s ignited here because they only have one ignition apiece, the other four are for transfer. And yeah, it's about 700 meters per second from them. We have sufficient time to apoapsis, I think. Okay, let it go down a little bit too much, so we'll be lopsided, but overall, should be okay. Okay, that'll be good enough for now. 3,700 left as expected. Let us see. Well, as expected, given the engine failures, but... So, well, let's bring out the dialogue and then target Mars. And ASAP it says 3,900, unfortunately. Um, well, anyway, that's how it's going to go. So, we'll take that and we'll have to use 200 from up there. That should be fine, uh, though this opportunity entails a larger capture burn. Uh, we've got 2,500 up there. HM7B++. Too bad the plus plus doesn't come with extra ignitions. Okay, here we go. All four lit. Looks like we're slightly late on the burn. Okay. Well, uh, let's just throw down stage and continue. Quite a ring of these four kilonewton thrusters, huh?
practically an air spike if we pretend that the docking port's a spike. Okay, no indication of an approach yet there. Right around there is the current minimum. We'll just do a mid-course correction for that. Okay, so a 59 meter per second correction, 16 degree inclination with respect to Phobos. And capture... Uh, well, with about 800 we can capture, so that's not too bad. That'll give us enough, hopefully, to rendezvous with the station, though. That's tricky. The station is there. So we are once again going to be out of phase with it. And we're going to have to see what to do about that. But once we get there, we will have about 1,300 to work with in order to figure that out. So we will add this alarm. And that's the mid-course correction. And it should be all nice and charging. All right. So that's OK. And it's on its way. Could rotate a little bit. Uh, just keep rotating, it's fine. All right, so let's get the next launch out. Uh, that's a while, 18 days. <laughs> well, we'll be at the window for this Mars lander, that's nice. We'll try to get the other two off, but we'll have to see. We'll definitely be building another pad, that's for sure. Maybe I should just start that now. So just for a new pad, we would be charged 100,000. But that'll have the same parameters as the existing pad. So that's one option. That's, that's pretty cheap. But that doesn't save us from having to hire more staff in order to roll stuff out. Another option is to have a bigger pad, which probably we need in the long run anyway. And that bigger pad should be able to accommodate at least this sort of rocket, one with four boosters. Right, that seems like the most logical upgrade. Uh, the Vulcan is the most powerful engine that the European Space Agency has available to it, unavoidably. Uh, so this what we're going to have to use. It's going to go all Soyuz slash N1E on us. Seems very powerful. And what would such a launch complex cost us is the question. Maximum tonnage. Well, let's give it some room. Uh, well, no, I mean, this is already just 1,800. So let's say uh, we should be able to be launch the two booster version on it. Minimum tonnage, 1,350. Like a little bit more of a wiggle room there. It needs to be human rated. So that's 1.2 million. And it'll take a few years. Yearly upkeep's 200,000. Hmm. Maybe we'll think on that. But instead of doing that, just have an extra pad here. And start with that. Okay, yes, nobody is supposed to be supposed to have been trained for this lander can yet. Okay, yes, uh, it should have a core on it, so that's no problem. Whoa, that's wiggling a lot. <laughs> uh, well, we're pretty close to when we need to launch anyway, so let's get started. Throttle up, SAS is on, ignition. Got all the engines this time. Launch. Whoa, okay, but it doesn't need to wiggle like that. Okay, well, on our way now. Past Mach 2, even. Okay, booster set. With the previous launch, because we had engines out on the boosters, they actually hung out for longer. That's everything happening at once. But I guess that's alright. We've got the RZ-20s on this one. Actually, we can probably have the fairings go now. Oh. So, of course, now we're presenting a heat shield to the admittedly thin atmosphere, so... 
sure we get a little bit of drag from that. Okay, that's the core out. Don't know how much time to have lapses we need for the stage, but that's probably too much. On the right side, this should have just enough for the transfer, which is what we want. Of course, it's not tagging along at all. Uh, I think I'm going to take advantage of their extra ignitions and wait a little bit. It's getting a little bit out of hand because of the core stage's vigorousness. Oh, you know what? I don't know that these solar panels can retract. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, that might be a problem. These might be non-retractable solar panels. We'll have to fix the other lander and make sure it has ones that can actually retract. They can track the sun, but they can't retract. Well, I'm, I'm sure we'll get some critical test data, etc, etc. Okay, re -addition. Okay. Transferring to Mars, knowing that this lander isn't going to work out because the solar panels are probably going to rip off. But we can get the capture data for it. There's many other things that have to work out anyway. Oh, that's very nice compared to the other one. Well, in this case, getting the exact right time because this is exactly the timing of the window seems to have helped quite a lot. Not that we need it, we had enough Delta V for what we were doing before, and we can't use the extra in the stage anyway. Okay, time to go. And ignition. Okay, we'll just do the rest of our CS here. Oh, no, it's going further away. Um, hmm. We actually have some Delta V with this thing still. So, why don't we try for a large correction here in Earth space and see if that can help. Okay, well, we can probably get that. And we don't need a mid-course correction if we can get it there. Okay... Ignition. Now it's reading that periapsis completely different. Okay, okay, maybe it's a little bit too sensitive here for that kind of thing. We need to separate off from this stage anyway, and that's gonna cause a bit of an impulse. So, yeah. Everything is good, and separation. Okay, let me just spin up here. Anything else that we need to correct, we'll just... Oh gosh, oh wow, that's pretty far off. Anyway, it's too sensitive over here if just turning to the sun makes that much of a difference, so we will in fact do a mid-course correction anyway. Okay, well that's good enough for me right there. So 7.8 meters per second for a mid-course correction. And we've got that in our alarm list. And this is on its way even though with the non-retractable solar panels it's not gonna work out for us. Okay, well let me go and edit the other lander. We'll see, I'll send the tug first and then we'll contemplate the la lander. Maybe I'll think it over because you know we're gonna be pretty far away from the actual window and it's gonna cost a lot more to send it. Um, now I'll sleep on that decision. Well, these Mark 1 solar panel rays both say that they are retracting. Otherwise, it says p p panels cannot be retracted. Let's see, this one was 1.37 kilowatts. This one's cheaper, it looks like. 1.08 kilowatts. And this is 2.67 kilowatts. In theory, lighter too, so that's good. They're tracking... they seem to be a better technology overall. It might, it's just probably an orientation thing. 1.08 kilowatts. And it seems to consume 954 watts, though. And at Mars we get half the solar panel input as usual. 
heat shields blocking the way here but that won't be the case hopefully in action I think it'd be a lot safer because of solar panel decay we have the other ones though it seems a little bit tight with these maybe putting them like that is not so bad though technically when they tilt those thrusters might be hitting them I just want you to know that I would pick a scale between this one and that one if I could so uh, that's the situation but uh, and yeah then the thrusters won't be blowing at them but right now the thrusters are probably gonna be blowing at them but actually when they're extended the thrusters are probably blowing at them anyway so let's just not talk about it all right well we've got plenty of power input now and they are retractable and they are tracking you don't have to toggle anything about that hopefully and even better they seem to be lighter than the previous versions so that's good but we will have to unlock them I'll have to ponder whether I want to proceed with that one but let's uh, roll out this Mars tug yeah by the time the Mars tug rolls out we'll be pretty far away from the window and you transfer to see what the longitude of ascending node should be yeah that oh uh, yeah well anyway uh, two degrees it looks like. Okay, let's just launch and see when two degrees is. Ah, I went a little bit far. Okay, well it's in night time. SAS on, thrall is up, and ignition. And launch. Off we go with our tug. After that first launch where we lost two engines, I keep going too steeply now. <laughs> uh, we need to flatten out faster. Okay, booster set. Okay, a little bit late on the fairings. Ah, there's the sunrise. Delayed because we had to start earlier. So probably the earlier launches, the first two launches would have benefited if we went to a slightly different, well, we, that if we launched at a slightly different time. And maybe we should write a little bit like that too. 4,200 meters per second in the next stage. That's a HM7 stage again. We're still going to need about six, 700 from it. A complete orbit but it's just a tug okay separation ignition of two HM7s we are carrying an older RPWS on here but we might as well run it while while we are here and we do have science in here too just in case it can be done and one thing this can help us with is getting data on the AJ-10-190. I didn't want stage view. So yeah, we need some of that. A lot of the time we'll be relying on it as our only engine. Of course, this mean time between failures right now is half a year. So, you know, it is repeatedly a very reliable engine in general. All right, we have shut down. We are in orbit. 3,517 left for the transfer. Okay, ASAP. Well, it's going to take a little bit. 3,800. Uh, that's fine. So I guess like 5,000 or so. All right, probably we should get going. All four of those HM7 slit. Okay. And well actually we want all that going at the same time. And go. And ignition. Well, that's a little bit more than I wanted to take out of it, but still we'll have you know five thousand four hundred, so not too bad. 
And actually, if we get those lighter solar panels on, it might have even more than that. There will be many tugs in our future. Lots of little pieces to arrange in Mars orbit after all. Okay, there's our encounter. Uh, alright, alright. We'll do a mid-course correction with that being the current situation. And the other two are at 78 days and 82 days, so I'd like it somewhere around that time frame. Say 80 days. Okay, basically what we have with the other ones. And that'll take 40 meters per second. Okay, so those three are done. Let's go back to the Space Center. And I'll once again use Transfer Window Planner to plot us a solution and see if we really have time for that other lander or not. I'm just going to roll it out, and if we can't do it, we'll roll it back. So after it rolls out, I know it costs money, but let's see. Uh, I mean, it's no longer dark blue over there. Let me just limit that. Ejection 4097. And I'm probably not going to get it right. It's not that bad. Let's just launch it. <laughs> Let's just launch it. Yeah, nobody's going to be inside. In fact, nobody's going to be inside for the launches, even when we're going to eventually have it crewed, of course. It goes to Mars uncrewed. So I don't know if any Kerbal needs to be trained for it. I don't think so. They only need to be trained for it if they need to get in during launch. As far as I can tell. Um, we'll have to hope. Uh, so we're looking at 4,100 from this stage in order to transfer. So we have that's 400 left to complete orbit. Down here, they sum up to like 8,900. 8, 8, so it's pretty tight. And we definitely don't want to use Delta V out of the lander to finish, uh, to finish a transfer. So throttle up, SAS is on, ignition. Well, we're a little bit early, but launch. But also, we're a day late off of that, so... I will try to fly the rocket a little bit better than some of our previous attempts. So that'll be five missions for Mars in 2024 for us over here. If only that is the kind of 2024 we could have ex expected. Okay, booster set. Bearing separation. Okay, well, not too bad. Uh, we will take a little bit more out of the next stage than I wanted, I think, but not too bad. A little bit better than the previous launches. Interesting, I went with the RZ-20s again. If we had the HM-7s, it wouldn't have been a problem. I still overshot a bit. Okay, separation and ignition. We have eight of them. Uh, lopsided. Oh, that's getting pretty bad. All right. Well, let's see if we can just transfer. <laughs> well, that's more than I was expecting. But maybe I can do with mid-course adjustments. Or a little bit less. But it looks like we'll have to complete orbit first. Well, completing orbit was probably part of the problem. Well, our ideal timing is way off though. Okay, well that'll basically take the delta v of this stage in. The question is whether we can do some other maneuver out there somewhere. Not really, that's already costing 320. Okay, we'll just take whatever... <laughs> whatever MechJeb tells us. Yep, I don't see an easy way to do a mid-course correction to help it. Probably shouldn't have launched this this time. 
one month away from the window is, as it turns out, a little bit too much. Is it a total loss? Not exactly. I mean, with the lander, we've got 5,100. So if we use 250 out of it, it's not impossible to do a landing. And an ascent again, of course. So, yeah, I mean, it's not... It's not impossible. Oh, one engine lost here. But not a big problem in that situation. We have eight of them. It is using some yaw, though. Yeah, well, the engine loss does make us a little bit late. Okay, the lander has to do some work. Got its four AJ-10 190s. Okay. Well, that's not quite there yet, is it? We went too far a lot, it looks like. Well, just a timing issue. Mainly because of the loss of the one engine, but probably I was off anyway. Let me just do this first because we've already passed this node and we will once again have another timing issue. But this is making it harder for us to succeed as far as not so much getting into landing, but ascending from the surface of Mars afterwards. Okay, ignition. Okay, mid-course correction. Okay, and so we will have that sort of set up as with all the other missions with another 20 meters per second. And we'll add that alarm. They're all sort of in the same time, at the same time. And this should uh, be recharging in daylight once we get into daylight. Okay, we are recharging just fine. And yeah, so we've launched four missions to Mars. This one still has 4,386. So we'll need some to land, of course, and then we'll need to try to get into orbit. Uh, so it's gonna be a little bit difficult Especially since we're going to try to aero capture first and we need to then circularize, well not circularize, but lift that orbit up so that the lander is accessible and then drop it back down into the atmosphere again so that it can do its landing. So that does take extra propellant and we'll see how it goes. We have the other lander mission though that has a problem with non-retracting solar panels, but it could still teach us something about the system that might be helpful once this one arrives, or once this one actually attempts its landing. So anyway, that is how the 2024 window has gone as far as launches, and we'll see how the missions do when they arrive at Mars. Uh, no, that's Jupiter. Anyway, so with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.